everyone welcome to my channel 10 ways to wear it i'm alicia and on this channel i take one fashion item or one fashion trend and show you all 10 different ways to wear it but that is not what we are doing today so i don't even know why i said all of that in today's video we're going to be sitting down chit chatting about some grown woman stuff you all saw the thumbnail you clicked on it so you know what you're here for we're going to be spilling some tea today well actually i got my wine so we're going to be spilling some wine today y'all but we're going to be talking about 10 things that I think no woman should be doing in her 40s, okay? Now, this video is satirical. It is not to be taken seriously. We're just about to chit-chat and have a little fun in this video and a little bit more fun in the comments. So if you want to hear 10 things that I think no woman should be doing in her 40s, let's talk about it. Let's get into the video. <laughs> y'all let me go ahead and just go ahead and pour this wine right now because uh we about to get into some stuff and i hope i don't piss nobody off but the reason why i wanted to do this video is because i recently saw that beyonce turned 40 and she shared a lovely message which i'll post on the screen right now so you all can see it you know i guess people told her you know your 40s is like the end or whatever but she was just letting people know i feel the best i've ever felt in my life like and i just thought that was so on point i also saw that serena recently turned 40 serena williams and she also shared a lovely message i'll post that on the screen for you all as well but yeah you know seeing that beyonce and serena turned 40 and then also one of my favorite youtubers and uh, bloggers danielle from the style and beauty she turned 40 and she shared her you know 40th birthday trip by herself and you know just her stuff she did in NYC with her friends like just grown woman ish I was like you know what the women in their 40s we are killing it and I say we because I'm recently in the club too you know what I'm saying so you know I thought let me just sit down and do this video so I'm gonna do two parts of this video I'm gonna do what I think we should not be doing which we're doing today and what I think every woman in their 40s and up should be doing. So I'm going to do that one in a separate video. But I decided to do the negative today. <laughs> so we can laugh a little bit and clown a little bit. But I'm going to sip on some wine. I'm sipping on this wine. It's called Jumbo Sale. I recently joined an... Um, monthly wine subscription with brightsellers.com i'll link their information below i really love it y'all for years i thought i did not like wine and it turns out i actually do i just didn't know about wine i didn't know what palettes were for me i didn't know what i liked i didn't know how to match wines with certain things but now that i've joined their little website i've learned a ton so you know my wine game has been elevated so i'll link all of bright sellers information but they did send me a box with four different wines and the wines were picked out based on a questionnaire that i filled out it's super simple and easy and you know you get to expand your wine palette and learn more about wines you know wine is elegant wine is grown you know what i'm saying we're not always sipping on you know that juice you know <laughs> sometimes a lady just wants to have a glass of wine so definitely try out brightsellers.com i'll link their information below and I want to thank them for sponsoring today's video partnering with me on today's video i will have their information in the description but let's go ahead and talk about the first thing i think that no woman should be doing in her 40s let me sip this because it's about to get real okay first up no woman 40 and up should be having unprotected sex in uncommitted relationships now you gotta hear the whole sentence because I didn't just say, you know, don't have unprotected sex. I said, don't have it if you're not in a committed relationship. Okay, none of us are perfect, you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> and um, I just think if you are engaging in casual sex, that's your business, but it definitely should not be unprotected. It is just too much out there right now. And, you know, I think the goal for most of us is to get into a committed relationship, find a husband, you know, settle down, all of that. But until we do that, you need to protect yourself. You got to protect yourself out here in these streets because it's a lot going on, y'all. And honestly, I'm with the whole let's date, let's get to know each other, let's talk, let's, you know, let the things flow naturally. Let's go get tested, you know, and then get our commitment on. And then we can enjoy ourselves you know what i'm saying go get that testing done and you know if that's how you want to roll in your committed relationship but having unprotected sex and uncommitted relationships with guys that are just you know you're not serious with 
I don't think that's something we should be doing. I know that, you know, when we're younger, sometimes we're out there doing things we shouldn't be doing like that, you know. But when you're in your 40s, you are grown and you need to think ahead and you need to protect yourself. So, no uncommitted relationship, no unprotected sex, ladies. Let's move on to the next one. So since we're on the topic of relationships and sex, the next thing that I think no woman should be doing in any relationship, whether it's romantic or platonic, is buying someone's affection or engaging in a one-sided relationship. Now, I wanna talk about this because I have done this in my 20s. My self-esteem was like really, really unstable. I went through a lot of depressive states in that during that age. And I found myself in one-sided relationships where basically it was just me doing everything, giving everything, you know, trying to hold things together. I'm the glue, I'm the bread, I'm the butter, I'm the meat, I'm the lettuce. I was everything in the relationship. I was giving too much. I think once you get grown, you know you are well aware when somebody is using you or when somebody's taking advantage of you or when you're putting yourself in a position to be taken advantage of. You can no longer lean on that I was young, I was naive, I was this, I was that. No, you're grown and you know very well when somebody's using you. One-sided relationships might be something we engage in when we're younger. A lot of women develop that sort of protection and sense young, you know, at a young age and they're just not gonna deal with any of that. But some of us are late bloomers, some of us have been through some things, your girl here personally. And you know, I thank God for personal growth because I'm out of that. One-sided relationships will never be for me. I'm grateful that I have such an amazing man in my life who takes care of me, who is sweet to me, who's good to me, who does, I mean, this man goes above and beyond and that's what I want and that's what I deserve, okay? So one-sided relationships, ladies, let it go. If you're doing too much, if you're the one always paying for the vacation and paying for this and doing that, and he never steps up to say, okay, let me get this, or I got that, or you know, or you know, it's just, you know, you know when it's not right. Stop engaging in one-sided relationships. Stop buying people's affections. We are too old for that. We are grown grown, okay? No more of that. I'd love to hear what y'all think in the comments about that, but uh, let's move on to the next one. So the next thing that I think no woman should be doing in her 40s and up, and this is like one that I just don't understand, is being overreactive to everything and fighting. Personally, I feel like this. Unless somebody puts their hands on me or invades my personal space, meaning I'm not gonna stand there and let you stand close to me spitting in my face or something like that, but unless you're doing that or unless you're touching me, I can move on about my business. I don't care what you say from a distance. I don't care how much you woof and woof and woof. I'm not gonna put my hands on you unless you put your hands on me or in invade my personal space. And everybody's idea of personal space is different. You know, how close somebody is to you, how much they're in your face, the risk that they could hit you, you know, you know, it's up to you what that is, but I think being overreactive to people's words, being overreactive, you know, in traffic, where you're ready to get into a road rage event over something small, being overreactive, you know, just with family, with people. It's not cool. When you're grown, you should be able to take a breath and say, is this really worth it? Is this person worth it? And you should hold yourself at a higher standard. You know, young people, they can be hot headed. Let me take a sip, y'all. They can be hot-headed and quick to just go off at the drop of a hat, you know, from somebody saying something to them or looking at them wrong or bumping into them exact accidentally or something like that. But when you are 40, if you're still out here fighting over some silly words or, you know, somebody cutting you off in traffic or, you know, just, it's not what we doing that is not what we're doing honey we're not doing that okay and you know i work in law enforcement i work out in the field with people i've had people getting in my face okay it happens on a regular basis okay with the job that i do and uh even with that i'm still like you know unless i feel like you really are i feel threatened or i feel really at risk you know just as long as you're not all in my face you can say what you want to say you can call me the b the n the a the f the 
whatever it doesn't matter don't put your hands on me and don't invade my personal space and i just see a lot of you know women who are older out here fighting and carrying on and pulling out braids and pulling out weaves and, and it's just like why, why are we still here are we in high school what is going on so ladies if you are in your 40s you should not be overreacting to everything and you should not be fighting unless somebody puts their hands on you or invades your personal space which i think let's move on so the next thing that i think no woman should be doing in her 40s is not exercising if you are not exercising at some point throughout your weeks honey you need to start i don't care if you're just doing walking down the street walking to the store doing a couple of walks a week to target and carrying your groceries back or your bags back it's exercise we need to exercise in our 40s and i recently met a doctor while i was at work he um, lives in the area where i work and he told me he's a geriatric doctor he's a geriatric gerontologist is his specialty so he specializes in old people most of his patients are in their 90s and hundreds like 100 and up he told me exercise is more important than diet which shocked me he said a lot of his patients that are in their late 90s and over 100 years old they eat what they want to eat they eat very good they eat bacon they eat whole eggs they don't cut out the egg yolk and all that stuff but they exercise they get up and they go walking every morning and that's one thing that i see in my area a lot there's a lot of asian people that live in my area a lot of them are old and i see them get up every morning walking doing their little stretches while they're walking carrying their little weights and stuff while they're walking and a lot of them look like they're in their 80s 90s or maybe even 100 and up and they're moving good they're they're looking good they're healthy they look like they could live to be 120 130 you know but the exercise element, I think, is what matters most, just like that doctor told me. He said, if you are over 40, if you don't have some kind of exercise regime going on in your life, you're going to be sickly when you get old. So he didn't say you need to eat right and this and that, because he even said himself that he pretty much eats what he wants to eat. But he was exercising walking at the time that I met him. And he was saying, oh, you know, um, you know, it's good that you're walking and stuff, because I happen to be walking on my break. When I met him and he was like that's awesome you know it's good for you to walk because you know you need to be exercising he asked me how old I am I told him and he was like yeah you're at the middle point of your life most people live to be about 80 maybe well into their 80s so at this age in your 40s that's when you need to start exercising pumping your heart pumping your blood pumping your organs and he said the more you walk the more often you walk the faster you walk that will guarantee that you'll walk longer in your life that you'll be mobile, you'll be healthy, you'll be able to get around on your own. So people, if you are in your 40s and up and you are not exercising, you need to start. And that doesn't mean go run out and, you know, sign up for a spin class or some stuff like that. You can just be walking, go to a track, a local college, a local park, and get your walk on, stomp on. Okay, as Snoop Dogg would say. Go ahead, start working out, ladies. It's important for us. As hard as it is, we got to do it. Now let's move on. Alrighty, so this is a good one, y'all. So the next thing I think no woman should be doing in her 40s, and this is something that I definitely did in my 20s and maybe my early 30s, is living above your means and overdrafting your bank account. Okay, um, there was a point in my life where my finances, I was so terrible at budgeting. My finances were so bad that I was paying like $1,000 in overdraft fees every month. I went through that okay i didn't file bankruptcy i ended up paying my way out of it just making monthly payments to get myself out of that hole and the debt that i used to have and now my credit score is really good really really good y'all i could cry it's so good but there was a point when i was overdrafting i was living above my means i was trying to keep up with people running the street with them spending money i didn't have because i didn't have the job to support the lifestyle i was trying to live um and you know just being a fool and now that i'm older i'm like what to pay twenty dollars or thirty dollars for you know making a purchase that was five dollars or something i can't even i can't even process it i want to slap the shit out of myself for the times that it happened y'all for the times that it happened in the past for the money i threw away i want to slap the shit out of myself i'm gonna be honest right now with y'all because girl when i think about that i'm like uh-uh 
if you are a grown woman in your 40s and you still overdrafting your account paying $20 for transactions on your account or you're just in general living above your means meaning your monthly expenses are far outweighing your income you need to pull it back get your shit together okay yes we're saying shit in this video <laughs> because that is ridiculous and you're throwing away money that you could be investing that you could be saving you know money that's important at this point in our lives because we're trying to if you haven't already you know a lot of young women out here buying houses but like me i'm look i'm doing that now you know so if you haven't already you know we're trying to buy property we're trying to get our life together we're trying to get secure the bag honey not not throw away the bag okay so get it together if you're living above your means overdrafting your account and you're over 40, and eh, no woman should be doing that over 40, girl. Get it together. Love you. Let's move on. Okay, so the next thing that no woman should not be doing in her 40s is putting away for your retirement. And I just talked about the whole bank draft thing. This kind of ties in with that. In your 40s, age 40 and up, this should be even before your 40s, honestly. I think at 30, you should start saving for your retirement. But definitely at 40, you need to be putting away the max into your retirement, whether it's your 401k, 457, a Roth IRA, a, you know, a, a, a high yield savings account, money market account, um, what other options, a thrift savings plan, whatever you have going on, you need to be putting the max in there, okay? Because a lot of times it's pre-tax money that's going into your retirement. So if you're someone like me who doesn't have kids and doesn't have dependents, it's money that they take out before taxes so it lowers your income. Put away the most money that you can because none of us want to be working into our 70s and 80s. We need to have a plan because nobody's coming to save most of us, okay? And uh, whether you're married or not, you still need to be saving for your retirement. And I think most of us want to retire as early as we can. So that means putting away money as much as we can, as often as we can. And I think doing it in multiple streams is best. I have my retirement at work. I have a Roth IRA with Bank of America. I have a trust account that I have money going into every month. Like, you, it's good to have a few different pots to have money going into, not just depending on your work retirement, because that may not be enough, you know? And of course, then when I do retire, I'm, I'll probably qualify for Social Security as well. So that's a little something, you know, that's a little travel money right there. You know what I'm saying? A little Vegas, you know, a little slot machine money. You feel me? When I get, you know, retirement age, but um yeah definitely ladies no woman should not be saving for her retirement in her 40s that's just ridiculous you need to be putting away some money let's move on love ya alrighty so this next thing I want to talk about that no woman should not be doing in her 40s is not going to the doctor when something is wrong and not getting regular checkups every woman should go to the doctor when something is wrong and I realize not everybody has health insurance out there but there's options out there for you if you need to go to a doctor when I was younger and I didn't have a job that supplied insurance I used to go to a free hospital a free clinic to get my birth control and stuff like that so um, I, I uh, found a way to get what I needed and I know that those options are out there but if you have insurance for sure, because a lot of us have insurance and we're just not using it to the max that we should. And if you're walking around with ailments, something's wrong with you, and you're not immediately making an appointment to go to the doctor and find out what it is, I don't know what to say. Okay, and I can't lie, I used to do it in my 20s, something be wrong, and I'm just like, oh, let me just take some Advil and move on with my life. No, we're not doing that in our 40s. If something is wrong, you feel like you're having an issue a health issue go to the doctor and also make sure you're getting regular checkups you should be getting your mammograms annually we should be getting our pap smears we should be getting all that stuff we're not young you know tenderonies we are roosters and we have to take care of ourselves now okay so go to the doctor if something's wrong and get your regular checkups if you're in your 40s and you're not doing that no girlfriend get it together alrighty so the next thing that I want to talk about that no woman should be doing in her 40s is not using skincare as part of your daily regimen and also hair care. If you don't have a skincare routine and a hair care routine, honey, you're doing it all wrong because when we get in our 40s, our hair doesn't bounce back like it used to. I remember when I was younger, I used to be able to get the most extreme hair colors, extreme hairstyles, and my hair would always bounce back and it would always be thick and it would always grow to a decent length 
that doesn't happen anymore if I mess up my edges if I do something to my hair I feel like it's not coming back honestly I feel like that's it it's a wrap you know what I'm saying because it just don't grow back and act like it used to okay <laughs> but um if you're not taking care of your hair or exercising some kind of hair care routine you're doing it wrong but the skincare is just as important I for years had no skincare routine I used to wash my face with just about anything I my face used to be so dry but I didn't have a lot of skin issues I didn't get a lot of acne when I was in my 20s my skin was so nice so I didn't have a lot of problems that made me feel like I needed a skincare routine but now that I'm older girl I don't go to bed without moisturizing my face under my eyes okay the crow's feet the the, the laugh lines the smile lines it's all real now for me it's very very real for me and I realized that incorporating a skincare routine into my life will help me to preserve my skin okay that whole black don't crack thing that's some BS okay because it will crack if you're not moisturizing it like anything else but uh, yeah if you're not incorporating a skincare and a hair care routine into your life ladies you're doing it all wrong no woman should not be having skincare and hair care as part of her daily regimen okay that just means oiling your braids underneath your wig and massaging your scalp that's fine if that means taking your braids down and washing them every two three weeks that's fine if that means washing your face every night putting on some skincare products doesn't have to be expensive but it's something that we all should be doing because if you wait too late only those wrinkles those fine lines those beauty marks they're going to catch up and they're going to stay with you and you're going to be looking a lot older and i see so many beautiful youthful looking elegant older women now and i want to be like them I want to be like Jada Pinkett's mom. She is so freaking beautiful. And I realize she got a little change, you know what I'm saying? But I think a lot of what these people do can be done even if you don't have a lot of money, honestly. You know, we can do it too. We can. And um, yeah, so if you're not doing skincare and you're not doing hair care in your 40s, girl, get it together, okay? <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, y'all, so the last thing that I think that no woman should be doing in her 40s and above it's putting everybody's needs and wants before yours okay we as women we do so much we we get so caught up in nurturing and giving and caring for that sometimes we neglect ourselves in the process we put the kids before us we put our man before us we put our parents before us sometimes we even put work before us we put co-workers before us let them take advantage of us and it's like, if everybody's before you and you're last, where does that leave you? How, is, how does that leave your self-esteem? And it really does go back to a self-esteem issue. And I've learned that by following a lot of the hypergamous channels that I follow and so forth, where I've learned about the value of putting yourself first as a woman and not doing that really does relate to self-esteem in a lot of ways. And as my self-esteem has grown and become solid and stable and secure, um, I, I'm I put myself first okay if I'm tired I'm not going if I'm not feeling good or I just I put myself first I used to be such a yes girl I used to be such a, a appeasing and giving person but life has changed me I have to put myself first I have to put myself first and honestly when it comes to your romantic relationships in a lot of ways, it's healthier for your romantic relationship if you put your first self first because you are responsible for your own ha happiness. You're not putting the burden of all your happiness on that person because you're going to take care of yourself first. Whatever they're bringing to the table is like the additional, you know, it's the supplemental. It's, it's, it's bringing more richness to your life, but you already got it taken care of. I think that is so important and healthy. You have to stop putting everybody before you. Okay, and I know that's hard to do for a lot of moms out there and stuff. You have to start figuring out a way to make sure that your needs and your wants are being met. In your 40s, you should not be putting everybody before you. You have to take care of yourself. So that's the last tip, y'all. You know, there's a lot of hypergamous channels and channels out there that talk about this. Talk about how important it is for women to put ourselves first and to really value ourselves and take care of ourselves and stop putting ourselves behind everybody. There's a lot of channels out there. Chloe is one of them. I'll link her channel below. Uh, Chrissy is another great channel. I'll link her channel below. But um, yeah, they talk about hypergamy and how important it is for women to just value themselves. A lot of people think 
the hypergamous channels are just about like getting a man to take care of you or this or that but a lot of them preach you know just women putting ourselves first and taking care of ourselves and valuing ourselves and uh, treating ourselves the way we deserve to be treated first and that way we'll have that expectation of anybody we deal with it's important y'all if you are putting everybody's needs and wants before yours you're doing it wrong time to make some changes especially if you grown grown we know better okay we know better and that's what this video is all about <laughs> Thank you all so much for checking out this video all about the 10 things that no woman should be doing in her 40s. I really hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you'll take this video super lighthearted. I would love to continue the conversation in the comments. What did I leave off this list? What would you add? What are the things that no woman should be doing in her 40s? And I'm talking about the things we should not be doing, not the things we should be doing but the things we should not be doing. I'd love to continue this conversation. You all give the best feedback. And to a lot of my regulars out there, I just, I, I love y'all so much. Like when I see some of y'all names pop up, I'm just so happy to see y'all comments. So I'm just grateful for all of you. But if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button, girlfriend. You will not regret it. You will love my content and you'll love my community here. So hit that subscribe button to all my regulars. Uh, I love y'all. Can't wait to continue this conversation. Thank you so much to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video. You guys check out the description if you're interested in joining their monthly wine subscription. I promise you, you will love it. I love doing my little picnics for one. You know, all about that self-care tip for me. And they've sent me some amazing wines for my little picnics and for my little dates for one that I love to plan for myself. So check them out, y'all. All of their information will be in the description. So if you want to expand your wine palette, elevate your wine taste, girlfriend, try out brightsellers.com. But thank y'all again for watching. I love y'all and I will see y'all on the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs>